um, a bunch of our friends are joining us here on Zoom. So aloha no kako. If this is your va'ai aina avakea, maybe some or maybe even a snack, you can bring your mea'ai with you. And if you're wanting to even make lei, as um, Mehana will be sharing with us, you know, I, I saw I texted all our friends. I'm like, hey, our tita is going live in five minutes. Come join us. So they're like, yep, yep. We just like, go pick our, our little, our mea kanu outside and we're getting ready in front of the computer, in front of the TV, and maybe you're in front of your phone. So we're just really excited. And if you have your flowers with you, maybe you need a little bit of raffia. Uh, so yeah, and then, you know, oh, I need to pull it up on my Facebook page too because we're going to be going live as well. So I want to make sure that we can engage with all of our friends there. Yes, and I see we're live. So awesome. I got to make sure my audio is down on that. And woohoo! I see a bunch of our friends all joining us, whether it's here on... Um, on Zoom and we have close to 100 people already tuning in on our Kanayokana Facebook page. So aloha inahoa. Yeah, so fun. Uh, you know, this morning we had a great session with Uncle Kaipo and Kahapea and the Kanehuna Moku gang. And you know, I, I, I have my puke mo'olalo over here. If you didn't get to tune in, we were sharing this um, puke uukukahana uukukaloa. So yeah, go go to kanehunamoku.org. You can um, see how you can download the the book. But if you wanted to also purchase the book for a keiki in your ohana, um, you can or you know send it off to a kupuna. It, it's a beautiful book. It has beautiful pictures and. Yeah, we had a great session. Uncle Kaipo is such a, um, such a great storyteller. And he's also, um, yeah, so many good experiences. We had a great time with, um, with Uncle Kaipo and, and the team there. So we're going to get started in about another minute. If you're on our Facebook page, go share. Go share that link so that we have more of our friends joining us in. And yeah, I see some friends saying aloha already. I see people joining in from Oregon and Mililani Oahu. So we're really excited. I see more people tuning into our <laughs> tuning into our Zoom. So funny. As I listen to myself, I'm like, Malia, you need another word for exciting excited and exciting yeah p hoy hoy and i gotta go find all those other words because i really am excited you know to come and come and join all of you and bring all my friends and other community members to join in so yeah and i see wakani no kahola so i'm gonna holo mua here with our facebook and again a big mahalo to everyone for joining us Okay, as usual, we like to know where you are tuning in from. So put a shout out to your Aina and I will recognize all of these kupuna, our Aina kupuna. So I see Williama joining us from Moana Lua. Uh, Lehua is joining us from Papakolea, from Kavehi is joining us from Makaha. Uh, let's see, who else? The Ohana Kahapea Tanners joining us from Heeya. I see Kula Maui, Kaohao Oahu, Ho'okena, Kane Ohe, Pacific Palisades. Woohoo! Holua Loa Kona, Aloha, Loa Kako. We got people from all over, even Ke Kaha Kawaii. And I even see more joining us from Papakolea. Awesome. So let's 
keep on moving here. I see, oh, even Miloli. Aloha, ka ohana ka upu. Aloha. Oh, look, our friends from Miloli are joining us too. And Waimea, Anahola. Awesome. Makawao, Maui. Totally amazing. And oh, look, I, I found this on, on our Facebook page from our friends of KL Ho, you know, because we're kind of in the theme of May Day. And this um, Friday, May 1st, they will be having our May Day live concert on KHNL at 7 and on K5. So you got to go check them out. And, you know, we got Robert Casamero, Kainani Kahau Naile. Josh Tatofi, Lehua Kalima, and Keau Ho. So, so exciting. It's uh, uh, obviously, I'm just reading here from the um, Ho'olaha Hawaiian Airlines and presented by the Hawaii Tourism Authority. And, you know, there's going to be some Aloha Aina woven into all of this. So, got to come back and check it out. Sounds really exciting. And, like it says there, make a lay, wear a lay, give a lay on May Day lay day with you and you know if you've never been to a mayday concert with the ohana casamaro i'm sure it's gonna be really amazing for for us to be able to all join in from throughout the paiaina so go check that out okie dokie oh okay so we have some questions here we kind of want to get a sense of who's joining us here on our um on our Zoom and Facebook. So what's your favorite type of lei? Okay, and I just listed a few here. Put a one in the chat if you like puamelia or plumeria leis. Number two, a pikake. Number three, pua keni keni. Or number four, any other type of lei. Cause oh my gosh, there's so many different types of lei. So I see a lot of pua keni keni lovers. Um, people are saying they just like all of the different types. But I see a lot of threes in there. Yes, some pikake lovers too. Um, and maybe you could even put, if there's another type of lei that you really love, let, let's hear it. Let's hear what kind of lei, you know. Of course, my favorite is lawae. I love my lei lawae. Some like lei kukui. Oh, yep. My lei lau li'ili'i. What other kinds of leis do you guys like? Maybe some of you are also lay maker. Yeah. Cool lay saying, I like all lay. You know, if we could wear lay every day, all the time, we definitely would. Oh, yes. Luana saying, I like pakalana. Yes. And then they're saying, my lay. There's another my lay lover. Um, oh, my kailoa. Let's see. I have another question here for us. I want to know where do you get your lay from? Put a one in the chat if I make my own. Maybe you're a lay maker, or maybe you get it from your ohana or friend. Maybe you buy it from the store, which is okay too. We like to support our lay makers at the stores. And other, you know, I don't know. There's so many choices nowadays. So I'm seeing that a lot of people like to get it from their ohana and friends, but we do have a few lay makers that are joining us. Awesome. Oh, and I'm noticing, yes, Stephanotis, Pakalana lay, Aali'i, of course, from our Tita Anu and Nui. She loves Aali'i lay. Some are saying, I get it from all. I buy from the store, I go get from my Ohana and friends, and I also make my own. Awesome. Okay, so we got a whole variety of lay makers and just people that love lay so my kailoa ah okay so uh we love this picture of mehana and tutu amelia bailey and we're actually gonna hear a little bit more mo'olalo about tutu but i'm gonna stop sharing here and yeah say aloha kako i'm malia nobriga Oliveira, and i'm with hawaii nuya kea at the university of hawaii at manoa i'm really excited to be joining all of you from hana pepe and you know on behalf of kanayo kana and all of our partners we love bringing lea nue nue into your hale into your home 
and maybe you're driving and you just have us on the computer or on your telephone. So it's just amazing to be here. And I'm going to unmute Mehana and let her do a quick introduction and then we'll flow right into her beautiful pictures and mo'olelo about her ohana and tutu Amelia Bailey. Aloha Mehana. Aloha Emalia. Aloha mai. Ano ai me ki aloha ya o ko pakahi a pau mai Hawaii o ke ave. Ai ni iho ka hele lani. Me papa hana moko a ke a hoi. Aloha mai. How oli ka ike ana ya o ko. Ai aloha no. And where are you tuning in from today? I'm tuning in from Namahana Kauai on my auntie and uncle's porch on our ohana aina. Awesome. Mahalo. Oh, and who's this special guest here? I have P.I. Nae Molina with me today. She's my helper today. <laughs> oh, great. We love having helpers. I'm um, so grateful she's here. The kids have been gathering and making, and we've had a wonderful, fun day. So mahalo to you for convening us, and, and just mahalo, Malia, for everything you're doing um, with this whole series and all the people who shared. It's so amazing. And all you homeschool makua out there when you're running out of things to do, it's so incredible that there's Kanayo Kana bringing us all together. Mahalo. So we can just jump right into it, May. We have your beautiful pictures up on the, uh, on the screen now. So yeah, hele vili aloha. Okay, but before we do that, can I show them just a few things on my table? Okay, sure. Let me stop sharing here. Um, so I'll, I'll just tell you, first of all, that May Day was my tutu's favorite day. She loved May Day so much. It was a huge celebration, our ohana. And so we're so happy to do lei this week with you and help you learn to make your own lei. So I just wanted to get us started before I share a little history and mo'olelo with the plants themselves. Because you just, if you're like me, you might have just gone into your yard and grabbed things. Um, so I'll just show you some of what I have, because there's lots in your world, in your yard, you can use. So this is a basket that's uncleaned and unprepped. So we have red tea, kukui, ohayali'i. Um, so what I'm gonna ask you to start doing is prepping. This is a basket that is cleaned and prepped. So you see how they're smaller pieces? So you wanna think about how big you want your lay. So while I'm talking, you can start prepping. See this la'i, if I don't prep it, I can have a lay like this. Tahitian, wonderful, um, big kukui. Same with this ohayali'i. A big piece of ohayali'i while you're sitting there in your living room could be like this. Or you might say, oh, I'm going to just break off all these beautiful, sunshiny, bursting, wonderful flowers. And then when it's time to add into my lei, I'll add a cluster like this. I also love to use the tops. So I break these tops and use them as well. So you see how if I'm making like, this is more the size I want for a le po'o or a coco kupe'e like we're making today. But there's no wrong way to prep. Tutu says 90% of le making is gathering and prep. So you already did the hard part. You're gonna do the prep while we're talking. But just, you know, same thing. Everyone got bougainvillea. Bougainvillea is everywhere on the side of the road. Tutu used to pick it from the middle of the freeway when I went to visit her from Kauai. It was a little scary. But you don't want to use this whole piece. You're probably gonna break down like this and use smaller clumps that you can cluster and add to your lay, okay? So while we're talking, if you could just be going through your materials, sorting them out, so that you end up with kind of piles, what goes together. Some people use soda boxes, lohala baskets, salsa containers, set it all out, but just to organize yourself a little. And while you're doing it, give aloha to your plants. Love them and give them water. They love water. So we always have a pan of water by us. You could just dip things in, give them a soak, spray with your spray bottle. So don't forget those parts. La'i is wonderful to prep by stripping, just like this stripping and making just like that okay so those are options so make sure you're prepping as you go and then we'll go ahead and start the powerpoint and start sharing and we're going to try to make something like this today um and we'll we'll share what we have with us we have these are the lay that were made yesterday and today all these different styles and we'll talk about the different styles and these are things gathered from our yard 
beautiful. I'm so excited to see what you have in your yard and yeah, prep and enjoy. <laughs> if you, some of you might have come all prepped and it's all ready to go, but that would not be most of my Ohana and friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You know, when you mentioned about gathering on the side of the road, I remembered uh -huh. a time when a bunch of us girls went to San Francisco and we were like gathering um, what was like Lehua, I guess, on the sides of the roads of the freeway. And, you know, we were just having fun. And then we went back and we were making all these lay in, in the middle of San Francisco. It was so fun. But I think, like you said, I mean, it's what's available around you and that you don't always have to go up Mauka. You know, you can gather from your yards or maybe now while we're all planting, maybe you should be yep. planting more. I mean, we like planting food. But a lot of us like to plant things that we can make legs with as well. So let me bring up the PowerPoint again. Yes. Um, before you do that, while we're going, I just want to show you one more thing. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, I just figured people could also prep your raffia. So um, traditional is hal, mahalo kahanu for this beautiful bundle of hal. We often use raffia today. If you have yarn at home, it's fine. Any kind of string is fine. Dental floss, narrow string will cut your flowers. So um, like hale cordage, that's good. Um, if you wanna make a big lay for va'a, et cetera, um, but sort of thicker string um, is better. But what I want you to do is just take three pieces, go about six, four to six inches down, go ahead and tie a knot like this in your raffia. This is gonna be your tie for your lay. And then you're just gonna go ahead and braid. Just braid this top portion and then tie a knot. So you're gonna end up with something that looks like this, braided and then the rest of your raffia free, okay? So you got some tasks, we'll talk story and then we'll make our lay together. Okay, great. And my sister just walked in too. I'm so happy she's here. She loves to make lay, if possible more than me. We, we love to work together. We love to make lay together. And um, she's helping with our camera action today and we feel so lucky. Um, so this is our tutu, Amelia Anna Kaopua Bailey. Um, and she is, um, like I said, she loved this day. She loved May Day. So she would say this workshop, she started her workshop. She would say, today is the first day of the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Next slide. To say you'll never look at the world the same way again. You'll always be looking around to see what's growing all around you in your neighbor's yard, in the neighborhood shopping center. Um, these were her specialties. Pua Kenny Kenny Lei, Lei Pua Kenny Kenny, which is such an art, takes such gentleness. I hope you'll tune in, tune in to see Anui Nui and her girls um, on Thursday and learn many of their lei making arts. Um, and then Tutu Love Lei Vili, which is what we're teaching today. Next. Next slide. Um, so Tutu, she kind of had a way of making everything a celebration, including a lunch out with friends. Everyone would be adorned and be decked. And uh, many people know her for her dressed up, um, jubilant, celebratory, life of the party, wonderful self. Um, I know her and some of my favorite memories of her are at home, um, weeding her palapalai patch with a bandana on her head. Um, or this is her lay making station in her garage, where as a young Kiki, I would sit next to the door on the stairs and watch her make lay and prep for her and learn from her. Um, she gave us lay making baskets when we were five of our own lay needles, our own spray bottles, everything. So um, started us young and we've been making lay since then. She'd be so happy that our Kiki are too. Um, she adorned us with love at every occasion, whether we were going back and forth to Oahu, um, just there were lei at the airport always. Um, this is my sister, who's a Moloka'i princess at Kilauea Elementary School, and we're missing our May Day festivals this year at all our schools. Auntie Naomi Yokotake, mahalo for all your years of work at Kilauea Elementary. We love you and all the music from your ohana. Um, next slide. Um, this is Tutu's 80th birthday. So whether it was Thanksgiving dinner or a big celebration, she made lay for everyone. And I think Mel and I only now understand the kind of work that took. So she did most of it by herself um, when, for most of our life. Next slide. 
Um, I just did a little about Tutu. These are her parents, Camilla Amina and James Kaopua. Uh, next, she was raised in, Kahi, uh, in Kalihi on Dulik Avenue in Kalihi. Her parents moved from Kohala to raise their 11 children um, in Kalihi. Uh, this is the Kaopua clan, had a family reunion just before Tutu and her sister, Auntie Marcella, passed. Um, she was very close to her sisters, Auntie Marcella Brady and Auntie Nancy Ahana. So aloha to all our Kaopua Ohana. Next slide. Um, Tutu was the first in her Ohana to go to Kamehameha up the hill from her home. That was a big leap um, for her and their family. Um, she was very involved at Kamehameha. She loved it. I wanted to acknowledge Uncle Roy Benham. He was her classmate and he recently passed away. And those are his hands making his special lei. Um, lei hala. Um, Tutu just loved Uncle Roy and they loved to talk lei even though they made them so differently. Um, this is my grandfather, Robert Bailey. Um, Tutu met him. She went from Kamehameha to nursing school at Queens and she was an intern at Queens. She was in, re in training at Queens when granddad came as a resident um, from West Virginia and she took one look at him and said that's the man I'm gonna marry. Um, and Pearl Harbor was bombed after that. They were both pressed into service. Um, but later after this, the war, he came home from the Navy and they got married. Next slide. And they had five children, um, including my mother, um, who's in the center on the left. And Tutu was a career woman. She wanted to be a nurse, but she raised her children. She focused very much on their lives, sewing flannel pajamas for everybody, making the holidays amazing. Um, and then she got a job running the costume department at Punahou School and sewing for all the costumes and productions. And that was how she put her children through Kunaho. That was how, how the children got to go to Kunaho. Uh, next slide. So she didn't, she always says she didn't come to lay making till late in her life. And she always says, we're all so lucky. She says, I was a Renaissance lay maker. Wasn't to all her kids were in college. Um, my mom and dad got married. They wanted Hawaiian lay for their wedding. Um, and so they had to order them from the big island because there weren't that many traditional style Hawaiian lay at the time. And they're Bridesmaids carried them and mom mora haku, it was baby's breath and mock orange. And when they arrived, I think they were made by Bobby Meheula on Hawaii Island. Tutu was captivated. She was completely taken. She took them apart afterwards. She started going to Bishop Museum and doing research. She said she got haku madness, right? Haku madness. Um, and she was amazed by the pictures of our people wearing lei, lei of limu, lei of every possible flower, every possible thing. Um, this is Amelia Earhart. I just put her in because there she is after her solo flight arriving in Honolulu, getting lay. Dutu was captivated by her too and changed her first name from Emilia with an E to Amelia with an A. Um, so Tutu loved to learn. She loved new things. And yes, yeah, she would be on every Kanayo Kana session. Next slide. <laughs> Um, she had many teachers. Um, at the time, there were master lay makers, and Tutu sought them out. People like Marie McDonald, um, her sister, Auntie Irmalee Pomroy, who taught lay making in Kilauea School when I was a child. She lived in Anahola. Um, we mentioned Auntie Barbara Meheula. So Tutu would go and sit with them. If she heard they were doing a workshop or anything, she just would go and sit there and clean materials and watch. And that just absolutely overjoyed her. Um, so Haku Madness, we call it. Uh, it was contagious. She was into all things Haku. She taught all of the green room people in the sewing department at Punahou, um, all of the volunteers to make lay. She got them all involved in new projects. Next slide. Um, including starting the Punahou Carnival Lay Booth. Um, so this has been going for, I don't know, over 40 years. Um, they started it with volunteers from the green room um, and continue to make lay every year. Um, Tutu's favorite part of all of this was a kitty booth that she started where Keiki could come and buy their own lei for under $5 so everybody could be adored. She loved that. She loved to see all the kids and she loved to hand out um, lei. Um, headbands, yeah. Melly saying she, she made lei on headbands so that the Keiki could wear. Cute. Um, I just would say too, like, this is a difficult time for Punahou and just sending aloha to all our ohana in the community that are affected. Um, in every way, and just sending prayers and aloha for everything, everybody, and the right things to happen. And this Next looks slide. like your cousin. Looks like my cousin. That is, that's our baby cousin, our babyest cousin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's Lindsay Bug. Uh -huh. 
who's going to get married this fall, so she's not so little anymore. Um, but just kind of wrapping up about Tutu, and then we'll talk about different kinds of lay and make our lay. Um, Tutu did workshops. She loved to teach. She taught in the women's prison at Olomana. She taught with the Garden Club of Honolulu. She taught with Daughters of Hawaii. She would teach anyone who wanted to make a lay. And like she said, she was convinced it was going to change your life, and she loved it. Um, she worked a lot with Nake'u Awai and others, Alan Akina doing shows, making wreaths, sharing lay for Christmas. She loved it and was always learning and trying new things and innovating. <laughs> Next slide. Um, so I would, Tutu would say that, you know, some people say a lay is color, texture, fragrance. Color, texture, fragrance. Um, Tutu would say, and I would say that a lay is the aina you gather from it's who you are, only you can make your lei. So don't worry today how it looks. It's your mana, it's your aloha, only you can make your lei. But it's also who you're making for. Um, so I just wanted to share a few lei um, that I've made for people we love. This is Auntie Ala, beautiful Auntie Ala, who would be dancing at the Mayday concert. Um, Tutu loved her comic hula especially, Tutu adored her. Um, this next auntie is from Kauai. Her name is Auntie Verdell Lum. Um, her ohana love lei too. Her daughter, Auntie Haunani Pacheco, does tropical flowers and makes beautiful lei. Auntie Verdell of Wanini always wore a lei. And I tried to make her lei look like shells um, and look, have that feeling of, of, of ocean and, and shell lei because um, that was something I associated with her as well. Next slide. She was so gracious and funny. Um, these are beloved anakala to many of you out there who have taught us all so much. Anakala Eddie Ka'anana, Anakala Walter Paolo, both gifted Lavaia, uh, Mahi Ai of Milo Li'i. Aloha to our Milo Li'i Ohana, I'm so happy you're there. Um, but these, I was lucky um, at the time that each of them passed away to work with Tutu to learn to make um, Pua Keni Keni Pu'olo for each of those, for each of them. And this is Uncle Walter's Pu'olo. Um, and, and that's, I always associate them with those with them. Next slide. So Malia had a whole session with Meliana Meyer on Puolo, how you make Puolo, how you paint Puolo. Puolo were really important to Tutu because she didn't just give you a lay. Here you go, here you go. It was all about the presentation, right? It's all about the hug. It's all about the kiss, the honey, the love. And she would use puolo to wrap her lei um, and then often put a pu'u to decorate it so you knew what was inside by the decoration outside. And then we also in our ohana use them for table decorations and all sorts of other things to put fruit inside. Easy way to decorate your, your um, event. Next slide. Um, and, and just Malia, as she's changing the slide, um, Malia's ohana helps to take care of puolo point in Hanapepe. And I always think... Ah, and <laughs> Meli says she's filling puolo with her salt and her pakai, and she always fills our puolo. So Malia, there's no friend like you, no one like you. You're so amazing that you're doing this and all you do. We love you and your community. Um, and on the idea of being kahu, of place, I just wanted to talk about ohia a little bit. We all love ohia. Um, we don't use ohia. Ohia is kapu in these times. It doesn't matter if your island doesn't have it. It doesn't matter if it's in your yard. We've chosen just not to use it. I miss not just the blossoms, but the liko so much. Um, and I really want to acknowledge all these people who are um, making it, who are, who are growing it, these nurseries. This is our friend Ethan's nursery on Maui. Um, and some of you may choose to use ohia from your yard. Everyone is different. Um, I think for myself right now, I'm just experimenting with the idea of kapu. We're all on kapu. We're not supposed to leave our homes. Um, we're, we're learning what we want versus what we need. I feel like ohi is something we need to be here for generations. So I'm willing to give it up right now. Um, and I'm learning. Next slide. Another favorite uh, hoa mea kanu, anue noise out there, and aloha our aali iku makani. Um, the one on your left, I think, is the one in our yard. And I couldn't figure out why I never bloom, never bloom. And then he lay told me, because it's male, that's why. Uh, mm -hmm. So I wanted you to see the male and the female. Um, the only thing I have today that's not from our yard is the female Aali. Um, that was from a place just down the road. Um, so next, 
flowers. We're not going to talk about this too much. Malia made a handout for you, but just what kind of flowers you can use. Um, you want to have at least a two inch stem when you're prepping at least. Um, again, longer, bigger, if you want to decorate a float or a, a va'a, um, you want to make sure they're not going to mai quickly. No hibiscus. Um, you want to make sure they're lasting because it's a lot of work. You want it to last. I don't use open plumeria. They're beautiful. Malia uses them beautifully. They don't last as long. Don't get poisonous stuff. That's the main thing, but pretty much everything will work and you need greens. You wanna make sure you have greens too. So today I have palapalai, I have kukui, I have lawae. Greens are important, they set off your flowers. So whatever you have. Uh, next slide, and we're, use your invasives. Use, use those invasives, put them to work. Okay, we're on schedule. We wanna to start to make our lei by about 2.30, so we're doing good. I wanted to talk to you about different kind of lei really briefly. And Malia can, she'll make the call if it's better to show the slides or, um, but I'll go through the slides real quick. There's different styles of making lei. So these are some of the ones we made to prep today. Next slide. Um, I don't have the kuis. So kui, we're all used to plumeria, pua keni keni, the beautiful kui lei that we make with the kui or needle. There's also kui poi poi, kui polo lei, needle goes straight through, flowers in a line, Kui poi poi, where you sew them through the side of the flower in the round, so that you make those thick, lovely round rope pikake or those other sorts of poi poi round lays. And um, what I'm showing you today are Healy. Healy is made very simply um, by braiding fern. Healy is something Na'i loves to do, and it's a specialty of hers. But you're simply braiding, you're just taking three pieces of fern. And all you're doing is braiding, just like you would braid your hair. Just like that, really simple, really easy, outside to in, outside to in, outside to in. My sister's really good at this. She made a more detailed instructional on this that's much more in depth. But basically a Healy is a braid of one material. And here's a beautiful full one that Mele made yesterday. I can show you. So this is a Healy Palapalai. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Then we'll go back to the slide. Sure. If you Healy more than one material, as soon as you take your la e and add la wae, like the very halau le with la wae that we all love, then it becomes a haku. If you have more than one material, but you're braiding, then it becomes a haku, um, even if it's just two materials, okay? So a haku, again, is a braid, but using the, um, adding flowers as you go. So there's no string, there's no nothing. Um, I can show you the haku right here. If I can find it in my basket. Here it is. Malia, you wanna show this up close? Sure because we might not have time for a quiz, so we'll just show them one time. Here's the haku front, here's the haku back. No string of any kind. It's all just palapalai holding that in place. Go ahead. So today we're gonna look at the backs of lei. That's really important. And I'm gonna show you some ugly, ugly backs I made so you don't feel worried. So the next, oh, not you. Oh, we're gonna do Vili in just a second and we'll show that, I'll be perfect. No, it's a beautiful back. So this is a humu papa on the left. Uh, humu papa is when you sew onto the back. So that middle, I just used a la'i back. I softened it a little bit in the microwave, 20 seconds. I folded it up and then you sew with the needle and thread your flowers onto that backing. So this, I've done this like, this is my third time in my life. This is, this is terrible at this. Um, it's really hard. So much aloha to our um, feather lay makers, our lay hulu people, Auntie Paulette, Auntie Mary Lou, Auntie Mele, Leleae, your ohana, because this is this is these are your techniques and they're so amazing. This is my friend uh, Mary Moriarty. She made this humu papa lay with red ginger. Isn't it amazing? That's a beautiful one. So this is the humu papa up close. Okay, hold on. Let me see. stop sharing here. You can see the front. And then you can see that, you know, kind of like kapokahi back. <laughs> Not better at the end, but it doesn't take many stitches. See, this is only about seven stitches. I didn't cut the yarn long enough. That's why the thread. <laughs> okay. 
So now we get to Vili. This is what we're gonna do. Are you ready? Okay, so a couple more slides to show you and then we'll Vili away. But maybe while we're here, not you wanna show your Vili you made today? You want me to show it? Okay. Not I made this Vili this morning. So Vili means to wrap. Um, Vili is to wrap. And so you're using raffia to wrap. And that's what we're gonna do today. All the flowers are wrapped in. So this is a Vili. This one, she made this one too, is a Vili. And then I'll show you two others here I have. So you can see the differences. This is a Vili. And this is a Vili with all natives. Mm. Should you like to mix natives and non-natives? That was one of her favorite things. Um, but you can do both or all. This back is actually not covered. This one, I've covered the back with fern. So you can see that. Okay, so back to the slides. Enough back and two more minutes and we'll be making. Are you all prepped? You have all your materials ready to go? How's yeah, our chat, Malia? Yeah, you got they're saying, they're, huh? they're saying comments like all oh, beautiful and Nani Loa and they're just loving um, seeing all of those ladies up close and you know, since I have the humu papa up right now, it made me think about a lot of our ohana in Tahiti as well. And you know, one of their styles is is also humu papa, and they like to do it on lauhala as their backing. And then when they sew it, they actually pull the lauhala into strips, and then they use that to sew as well. So the lauhala becomes the backing as well as the the string too that they use. So yeah, I wanted to say aloha to our Ohana Tahiti out there that, you know, we, we all get to learn all these different styles and use it in all of our cultural practices. I'm gonna invite Mel real quick. If you unshare the slides, come show her real quick. Mel says she's practicing this, so she's embarrassed to show you, but this is a haku. Speaking of our Tahitian ohana, right, made me think of you. So it's la'i and, well, it's two, two kinds of la'i, so I'd call it a haku. What everyone um, else does really well. <laughs> but, but braided. Um, and that's important, too, because we always say hakule, hakule, and we mean what I'm wearing or anything on your head. On your head is a le po'o, le a'i on your neck, kupe'e on your wrists. So le po'o is really wearing on your head. It could be a haku style like that the braid with more than one material, um, or very often it's a vili. So those are words for the style, but haku has kind of been um, adopted to refer to everything. Yeah, no, that's a great point because I was gonna eventually ask that because so many times people will go down to um, Mauna Kea Street, right? And they're like, oh, I want a hakule. But then when you look at it, it's not really a haku style lei, right? It's most of them there that's being sold on Mauna Kea Street is Vili style. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That, that's an interesting point. Mahalo for sharing that. Um, to the comments about the lei being beautiful, Tutu always said, if you have beautiful materials, you can't go wrong. <laughs> it just, it's all in the materials. So. I'm always grateful to the Aina and, and to all of these plants that, that make this possible. I showed you these Vili, I held them up to you earlier. Um, so we can do the next slide after that. I just wanted you to know how versatile a technique Vili is. Tutu loved to Vili. She said, you can Vili anything, just Vili it. It's like a verb, just, I mean, it is a verb obviously, but it's a useful expression. Just Vili it, like hikino. She loved to Vili. Vili is the action of mixing poi. Um, it's the, like a makani vili, like a tornado whirlwind. Vili is to spin because when you wrap, that's what you're doing, you're viliing. But like I said, depending on how big your materials are and the strength of your kaula, you could vili, you can vili a horse sleigh. You can vili, you know, for a Christmas float. You can vili for the manu of the va'a. Um, this is Honolulu Marathon Lays that Tutu made in 1978. Um, these are table runners, table decorations. She would make altar pieces, few pieces. You also can like Mele shared those little headbands for, for keiki, vili onto a plastic headband for a baby's luau that will stay on, really dainty, delicate. Um, this is my wedding bouquet, which Tutu vili. Um, so there's lots of ways to use this approach. We couldn't find pictures, Mel and I, of kahili. Tutu would make big, like three lay down on the kahili um, in the different colors of the different islands. And that was something she loved to do. So.
So Vili is what we're going to learn. So I think I have two more slides. I just wanted to stop and honor um, all our lay makers. Um, it, is, it is love. I, I don't get to make lay that often. Um, I love to whenever I can. I make lay for special occasions. I'm always grateful for the excuse. Um, Tutu always had lay materials in her fridge, always. So she was always ready to go. Um, I try to, I do that too. I take care of things. I save every little bit of things. And usually I have some to start with and then you gather and it's like yeast starter. It becomes something different. Um, but just wanted to mahalo some of the lay makers Tutu really loved. Uncle Bill Char, Auntie Kalei Nani Brown. They always helped her on big projects. Auntie Dora Ganu of Waianai, she and her ohana are amazing. They're at the airport. Auntie Dora's lay is second to the last stand. She makes every kind of lay, everything available. Cindy's, Lita's, um, Paki's cousin, Leilani Huggins, she loves to make lay in Los Angeles. Um, Anakala Ho'okele Crab, no one is more fun to make love to make lay with. Kalamai is going to crack up at me. Uncle Moses, Anakala Ho'okele is a riot. Um, he's so fun to make lay with. Love doing projects. You know, Tutu had many friends, Auntie Kobe, Auntie Anne, and just getting together at the big table, everyone making lay. Um, and I just wanted to mahalo my sister because really of anyone, she keeps Tutu's legacy going in, in her teaching. Um, she is constantly teaching workshops, constantly sharing, always experimenting with different styles of lay. And she's a true artist with a beautiful sense of color and things. So. I really, she's one of my favorite lay maker too. And we have fun making lay together. <laughs> she stayed up with me last night. <laughs> Next slide. And we uh, always feel like tutus around. <laughs> what are you yeah. gonna say for No, I'm gonna put a shout out here because I, I know a lot of our um our members here that you know and friends that are joining us. If you're on Instagram, oh. I I go and I follow Meliana. So go look for her, Meliana Hawaii. Um, on Instagram and she has all these amazing like how to's and you know if you want to come together so make sure you go follow her over there on Instagram and you know share it with others because so many of us want to be in these little hui of making lay wow. so yeah go go check out Meliana over there <laughs> uh, yeah people would be really proud of you <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just wanted to end with a few other lay making friends who love to make lay and I love to make lay with and really honor all the different specialties people have and people who can make my lay and um, all of our hoa who love to make lay together and share. Um, and then for the last slide, I just wanted to end with Keiki because I hope there's a lot of Keiki out there today and we're going to work on your lay now. And um, Tutu always said that she wasn't fortunate enough to learn to make lay from her kupuna. Um, she was, you know, that Renaissance lay maker getting into it in the 70s, cultural resurgence. Um, and she always felt so blessed and happy that her mo'opuna could say we were learning from our kupuna. Um, and so whether your ohana already make lei or whether you're starting today, this is something you can hand down in your ohana as a really fun, wonderful activity um, of cross-generational lei makers. And it's just a wonderful way to know your aina, to see your place uh, and to be together. So mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. And, and again, we love to hike up Mauka, but the ohia picture, we're leaving it alone. I almost am not picking anything from Mauka anymore. Um, just letting things rest. And Tutu said, you can grow it all in your yard. Um, but let's go ahead and make lay. And maybe Malia might have some questions while we're, while we're doing that. Actually, I do see one here. We have someone that's asking, what would you call a lay that is put around your bun? Ooh, we call it a coco. So it's like a coupe. It's short, like what we're making today, but it's a coco. Great. Like that. Put that in front of the camera. Not so you can see. I'm just looking for my raffia that was braided. Isn't it braided? Ready to go? Yes. Oh, here it is. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Hey. So now he's holding up a coco. And you know, the thing is, you don't always have time to make a lepo. -o. Meliana churns them out. It takes me a long time. So I love coco and coupe, which we're doing. Um, so that you can be adorned for May Day. And if you don't finish today, it's no problem. If you want to make a full lay po'o, just keep on going. So you have, you have your start. Oh, Melly says the clothespin, the clothespin. I have one here somewhere. This is your friend. You can stop and go at any time. Okay, it's a good analogy too, because you want to pinch. Whether you're right-handed or left-handed, 
This is important, this pinching action. This pinching is important, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose your longest raffia and your strongest raffia. I'm right-handed, so I'm pulling that to my right. To you, that will look like left. Whichever way you are, hold that out. That's gonna be your vili. That's your wrap, okay? So I'm holding, I'm holding, and I'm gonna wrap. I have my beautiful pad of prepped things. My sister is better with color than me. So she's always like, you can't put magenta and purple. That doesn't work. <laughs> I do. <laughs> so I always start with ferns or greens, palapalai. Um, I don't usually prep my palapalai first. So I'm going So I get my palapalai all together. Um, lots of greens, lots of greens. And so I'm pinching right here at the knot. I'm placing them right on the knot, holding my vili to the right. This is going to be my base. This is going to be where all my lay go. Okay, so here we go. I like kukui. Kukui for wisdom. Kukui, I love the silver. It's in almost every yard. So we got some kukui. Remember, we cleaned that ohayali'i, put a little ohayali'i in there. And now I'm going to wrap. Sure, Nat is saying she's going to push the computer down. So maybe, how's that, Malia? Can you see? Is that good? Yeah, so looks good. Got, okay, so there you go. You're already started. Um, so when I wrap, we'll look at the wrap next. We have these purple flowers in the yard. Ooh, sorry. A little bit of tea leaf. So for this part, we're going to just wrap. So I'm wrapping around, wrapping, and I'm gonna go around and pull and there's sort of a moment where I release that pinch so that I can pull it taut. Okay, there you go. It's important that you keep your braid up and your raffia down so that you're moving in a direction. If you wanna make a bouquet, just keep circling around and around and around. That's not what we're doing today, okay? So I usually add about two or three things at a time I'm going to get some of this nice green a'ali'i here. Nice green a'ali'i. And I'm going to place in some ulu. All of these things have wonderful mana'o, right? If you put in ulu, then things will grow. Verdant. A'ali'i makes things strong. Around. And then pull. Okay. So you go ahead and continue along and I can start to ask, ask question, answer questions because we have A'ali'i people in the room. I'm gonna put the A'ali'i too. Um, it needs to be cleaned. It's a little bit too big, see? So I'm taking off my bunch. This is why you clean before you go. So you add, I'm adding in like this, in and wrapping. And I should not forget my ferns. So one important thing is, again, we talked about how big you want your lay, not just prepping, but if I put my fern like this, it'll stick out like that. I can fold it. I can put it like this. Um, I'm gonna wrap. I'm gonna do some bougainvillea next so you can see the idea of big versus small. Bougainvillea, I could put it in here and it'll flop all around or I can nestle it. Each flower you're kind of, and it wants to fall apart, that's okay. You just say, come on back, nestle in right there. There you go, holding with my thumb. And now I'm gonna wrap. Sorry, I'm trying to do this backwards, it's a little funny. But is that working for you? you getting the idea? I continue to move down, keep moving down. If you pull super, super tight, your lay will go around and around and around. If you don't pull tight enough, your lay will fall apart. Tutu likes to take the finished lays and swing them. See if we did a good job. Um, but we'll just keep making. I'll keep making and I'll hold it this way and I can answer any questions as we go. In a moment, I'm gonna show you what happens when you run out of raffia. But let's just practice this and you can watch and try and ask any questions you have. Sure, so yeah, if you have any questions or comments um, and I do see some popping up in our chat, 
I think one of the things I saw you do earlier that maybe you can make a comment on is the tea leaf, adding the tea leaf in, because I think there's a trick there that not too many are familiar with. Okay, so see how I'm looping my fern right now, bending it in half and then placing it in. I do the same with tea. Same thing, you've stripped it, now you're bending it, place it in. Um, There's another um, comment here about the ulu. The ulu. You know, and, and say something about the ulu because not many people are familiar that that is from the ulu tree. Yeah, so I tried to think of things you would have in your backyard or that would be easy to find. Ulu is plentiful. Ulu is everywhere, like kukui. These are the, um, is it calyxes? Calyxes of the ulu. Um, when the new leaves come out, this is the sheath they come out in and they falls on the ground. So if you look around a ulu tree, and I also like to loop this, it's full of these calyxes. They're abundant. In five minutes, you can pick up 100 ulu. They're so wonderful. Some people make lay just with ulu calyxes and they dry beautifully, gorgeous on a hat. Aloha to my wonderful mother-in-law, Auntie Ipo Vaughn. She makes beautiful lay ulu. And maybe- so I'm adding my a'ali'i. And again, this, I haven't let go this thumb and finger. These are my, this is where my action is. This is keeping it in. Questions? Yeah, can you uh, mention a little bit more about the, the use of the ulu? So are you picking it up from the ground and then just using it straight into your lei? I am. Um, well, I so water, 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 water. Everything needs water. So don't forget, whenever I pick up anything, I never go straight into the lei, straight into the fridge. I always give it water. And Tutu says, just give it a dunk of water. You have a bucket and go soak it. You don't have to leave it in there long, but you have to immerse it completely. Um, and that is really important. Um, afterwards, then you shake it out. Don't let it get too soggy. Wrap it in newspaper, a cloth, and a plastic bag and put your materials in the fridge. They need a plastic bag. If you don't put a plastic bag, everything dries out real quick. It'll my real quick. Mm. Um, I have the one thing I had from the mountains um, oh. in my native lay was pa'iniu. I'll show you later. That was Tutu's favorite. That's a month old. We got it, you know, pre-quarantine, right? Picked like all of seven pieces. That's enough. And it's still going for a month. So if you take care of your materials and everything likes water, ulu is something you can overwater. If it gets too soggy and it sits in your fridge, it will mold. So you want to get things wet, but that's what the towel is for, or the newspaper is to kind of pat up some of that wet. Mm. You don't want things to be soggy and mold. You want to put your hands in here? There's oh. another question here um, from Katie. Do you have any recommendations for mm -hmm. invasive or non-native lay material? Ooh, invasive or non-native. Hmm. Lots of not, it, let's see. Um, Let's think. Lots of non-natives. Pride of India is a wonderful one. Let me think a little bit about some of the invasives. Um, well, mangrove, kukuna okala, thanks to our amazing pai pai ohe'eia, no more anymore. Um, but we used to love to go and gather the mangrove to make kuile, to make kuile. Um, there are lots of invasives you can the one thing that I struggle with is if you use invasives in your lay, you have to be careful how you dispose of it. Um, so like there's, I'm, I'm blanking on names, they'll come to me, but there's some invasives that have really spread around our um, Pai Aina on the roads and things. But those, if you don't, um, when I'm done with them, especially if it has a seed, like it's, it's a mixed blessing. It's great to cut those. But a lot of times cutting things makes them grow more when you cut things. So that's why if you gather in a pono way, you don't take too much from one plant, you move around where you cut two come out, right? And it helps it be healthier. You prune back, right? So if someone prune, prune their ohia tree and manoa tutu was there, you know, she was red, she would take everything and nothing went to waste. But um, that's actually good for trees and plants. So you wanna be careful with invasives 
that you're not strengthening them and that you're not passing around berries. So if it has berries, I make sure if I use it that they stay pa'a and that I'm not picking them when they're ripe. So if they're greenish or light pink, they're not ripe and I'm not passing them on um, to grow somewhere else. Generally, all my lay go back into the aina. We ho'i ho'i ka aina. There's nothing in here that can't go into the aina. When we make lay, we have a special trash for the plastic um, and everything else goes back to compost. Um, but not if it's invasive and you're worried it's going to spread. Mm, those are great tips. Um, Tammy is saying here on Facebook, Aloha, watching your wonderful talent from Central Oregon. Didn't know there were so many different types of wearable flower items. Love the wrapping technique. Oh, um, I have to say, Tammy, we love making lay on the mainland. You have different flowers. You have hydrangea. hydrangea. My sister says hydrangea, hydrangea. Um, and so whenever I feel like a lay is a reflection of the place that you are, you can only, Tutu I said, you can only make this lay in one place. It's only going to happen in one time in one place. And it helps you see your Aina and know your Aina. So when I travel, if, it's, if I can make a lay there, it makes me so happy. And you can grow all kinds of things in Oregon. My uncle lived there when I was a child. So I got to go sometimes in the summer. And that was one of the things I loved, the flowers gladiolas and amazing, amazing flowers. So mahalo for watching. Um, well, Malia, I have another question. I'm just gonna, are any of you, is your raffia getting short? Running out of raffia? So I'm gonna show you how to add real quick, real quick. Um, and then okay. while I'm doing that, Melly's gonna just put her in. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> I wanted Melly, I want you to see what different hands can do with the same materials. So she's gonna show you. So we're both making together. We have the same things to choose from, but all of your layout there should be looking different. Mel is, she has beautiful way. Everything is displayed. You can see every flower. I clump. She always said, you can make eight lay for your one lay. Um, and I can't stop. But I think I wrap too tight. So don't wrap too tight. Okay, so if your wrap is short, then you get another one. Can you hand me another wrap? Yes, okay, Oli, Oli. Oh, amazing. There we go. Thank you. Okay. So you want to pretend they're one. So take the end of your new one. We don't knot. You just wrap. So put these together. See, like it's one. I'm holding it on the back, holding them together. Okay. Oh, except I did it backwards. You want the long side out. <laughs> and you leave some, you leave some short sticking out on this side. Um, let's see, maybe I could do this better like this. There you go. So I've got two raffia. Remember which direction you're going. This is down. This is up, my braid. This is my end that I'm adding, and this is my new one. I hold them together. I twist them a little, and then I wrap. I only wrap about twice, once or twice. Each time I add flowers, this is the only time I wrap more. I go around maybe at least three times. And then I take all these ends, the short end, the new end, I put them all like this into my lay, tuck them all into my lay and then wrap again. Mm. See, so now you still got one. You made the rest disappear. Okay, you still have your bottom. Okay. Yeah. Other Great. questions? We're going to show you how to end here. Sure. Yeah. Um, just actually, there's a few comments here. Um, Trina is saying, you're making me so homesick. I'm in tears and lay day is the hardest. Oh, Trina, we love you. We miss you all the way over there on the east coast of Canada. We love you so. We, you brought us so much love and in, in your hello and your hula and your lay. We love to be celebrating May Day with you. Hey, this year it's virtual. We can. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Anue Anue says, Tutu felt sorry for me. I do not have a lay vili hand, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> But there's like Tutu always said, people would say, oh, you know, at her lay workshops, it's getting wide, it's getting skinny, it's going crooked. And she'd go like this, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, 
Yep, Lomi, Lomi, Lomi. <laughs> See? Beautiful. <laughs> she always said there's no lay that's not beautiful. Um, and you just enjoy. And, and you know, the more you practice, the more you get used to it and the more fun you have. So one more comment and then maybe you can show us the, the closing uh, or the ending of the lay. And uh, sure. this person is saying, getting ready to make lay for my daughter Makana graduating soon here in Denver. Thank you for this. I miss being home as well. Thank you and aloha to all our graduates and all their parents. We're thinking of you all this year. My friend said, you should all just wear your robes everywhere. <laughs> and we can just honk at you and wave out the windows and, and celebrate your amazing accomplishments, all of our graduates. So someone's organized a, um, if you hang a wind and go honk, you're just oh. showing aloha for the first responders. My sister's sharing that if you hang a lei on your mailbox, remember you can make lei for va'a, you can make lei for horses, you can make lei for mailboxes. Mm -hmm. Hang a lei or make a big bouquet, put it on your uh, mailbox, and it shows support for, for our first responders, our nurses, doctors, our healthcare workers, everyone who's on the front lines right now, um, being so amazing day after day, and they're ohana. Um, so on May 1st, make yeah. a lei for yourself, make a lei for your family, make a lei for your mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's show them how to end. Okay. So far, everything you put in faces up, right? Remember which way is up? The braid. Everything goes up, right? Um, like my ulu, my ulu loop. This would be up. This would be down. Okay. This is the only time you're going to reverse. And you're going to do that with fern to end. Okay. So you're going to wrap. You've got your last solid wrap. See my fern loop? Usually I would put it up. I'm going to place it in upside down like that. Okay, so I've got pieces of fern. I like to end with lots of fern. Um, this is, you know, remember this is your tie. You're gonna have another tie and the fern kind of bridges. So if you have a puka, if you have a lot of fern at the top and a lot of fern at the back, then that's covered. But it also, it covers the knot it finish, finishes it nicely. So not everyone does this, but this is important to tutu. Lots of fern and reversing your fern. So can you see I have that nice sort of furl of fern at the end? Yeah, beautiful. So now I'm going to wrap. These are my last wrap. So I'll show you that. And do my final wrapping. And this is again a place where you can give it a few times. One, two, and oh no, my raffia wants to kick out on me. This is a reason to make hull. Raffia comes from elsewhere. Um, it's actually the a palm. I've told a, mad, a palm in Madagascar. Yeah, so it's not um, a sustainable enough resource. Um, and also it's getting more and more poorly made. So that's my summer project, <laughs> summer school project is to get better at making hull. Um, right now, I use hull for Sarah, like if you're making a lei for ahu or for ceremony, I always use hull in that, those lei, um, not raffia. Okay, so I wrapped. Now I'm gonna tie. So I'm gonna take, remember my vili, my vili raffia? And I'm going to take my other two raffia and I'm gonna tie them together. You also can cheat, like this raffia doesn't seem strong enough, so I'm gonna move one over this way, or you can split them. But basically, you're gonna to wanna to tie a square knot. So you want to have your wrapping raffia and your base raffia. And remember, no base, no tea leaf, no hala, no nothing, just your stem in this, in this method. Um, and then you're gonna just do a square knot. Right over left, left over right. Or left over right, right over left, whoever you are. <laughs> um, so you're gonna get all of this in here, tied neatly, make a good, nice knot. I usually tie a few times here just to make sure it's pa. And this is a place where your raffia can break, don't panic. You can always add another one and tie it in. That happens a lot. 
Okay, so now we're tying it off and then just like you did at the beginning, you're gonna braid. So you should still have three strands to braid. Again, if you don't, you can take one, split it. If you need to, you could add another one in and tie it so you have more, but basically you should have three strands and now you're gonna do a closing braid that mirrors what you did at the top. So I'm just braiding. As you're braiding, Mehana, um, uh -huh. Malia is asking, can you use any type of leaf? Yes. Again, the um, how fast it wilts applies, the, the my, my rule. Um, some leaves, so pick them and trial them. Pick them a few days before you have to make your lay. Let them sit. See what happens. See what happens in your fridge. As long as they hold up. And, you know, Ohio lihi is fragile, right? This part of the ohaya li'i won't hold up so long. If my lei has to last longer, I'm gonna take out off these, all these beautiful showy parts and I'm going to use this part. So the same plant can have different parts that last longer. Mm. Same with lawa'e while you're braiding, right? Lawa'e lasts long. It gets more um, turgid, more rigid in the fridge Right? So you might have to let it soften, actually. Mm. But there's those really young lawa'e. I didn't pick any because they're not good. They don't work. They don't work for decorating. You know, when you go to the luau and all the lawa'e is going like this? Because the lawa'e was picked too young. Those really fresh, green-looking ones. So you can use any kind of green, any kind of leaf. Um, really, hibiscus leaves work great. Kukui. Um, Naupaka, naupaka. One of my favorites right now is pohinahina, a native. Mele loves naupaka. Things are plentiful. There's that beach vitex. It looks like naupaka. It's really common in Anahola and the east shore of Kauai and beachy areas. You can use any of those things. Oh, mahalo. Um, yeah. Any, um, I, we're going to start wrapping up now because we are a little over three o'clock. So any closing mana'o? <laughs> From the audience or me? No, from you, Mehana, before I bring up my closing slides here. Okay, so I'll just show you. I didn't finish my braid, but on this one I did. Braid to the end, tie another knot, and there you go. You're finished. You can wear it as a kupe'e. You can wear it on your bun as a koko. Um, or you can, you can share it. Or you can keep going and make a lepo. Um, but I really, I guess I would just say, I hope today is the first day of the rest of your life. Whether you're an experienced lay maker, I hope you learn something new. Um, or whether lay making is new to you, I hope it's something you want to add to your life. I hope it's not intimidating. Remember, all lay are beautiful. All lay reflect the place they're from. I hope you're inspired to plant in your yard more and take care of your yard, Malama, your place and um, to have fun, have fun with your ohana this May Day. And mahalo to Tutu and mahalo to all our kupuna um, that are behind all the sharing that's happening on Kanai Okana, including yours, Malia. We think of your beautiful popo and she always had lei too, and your mom. Mahalo nui, mahalo ya oi, mahalo ya oi e na e, me meleana, me Tutu, Bailey. I'm sending lots of aloha out to all of your ohana. Um, so as we wrap up here, and you know, I was going to say that there are a lot of them saying that they're so inspired to go and make their lay and to be prepared for May Day that's coming up on Friday. Um, so again, thank you so much for um, sharing all that you did today. And we always ask all of our ohana that have joined us, whether here on Zoom or on Facebook, please go to our kanayokana.net serve, um, slash survey. And that'll tell us just a little more on how we can serve you better. Um, and you know, you're also welcome to add in uh, any suggestions of other kinds of topics or practitioners that you would like us to connect with. Um, there's a there's a few uh, comments there at the bottom that you can also jump in. And you know, we have so many amazing presenters coming up this week. So please go to kanayokana.net slash lei and you can find out more. You know, th this um, collage of photos just shows you a little bit of our some of our friends that are coming up. 
We have Olelo Hawaii shows with Kumu Ekela Kani Alpi Okrozier. We have a partnership with um, Native Hawaiian Student Services and their bookshelf series. We also have a partnership with Ahakane and they are also bringing some of their friends to join us uh, on a session. So please go to our schedule online at kanayokana.net slash lay and join us again because we'll be having these ongoing throughout the week and that's the best way to stay connected. Um, like we mentioned before, please follow us on Facebook as well as Instagram. You can look for us there, Kanayokana as well as Hawaii Nui Akea. And we love sharing and being in your um, hale and in your in your um, in your ola in your life. So mahalo nui for spending this time with us and sending lots of aloha out to everyone and a big mahalo for for joining us today and have a beautiful rest of the day and rest of the week. So aloha. Aloha. Aloha.